All right, <clears throat> we're calling the water meeting together today on May 25th. Um, approval of the previous meeting minutes. Uh, we'll all have a vocal vote on this. Uh, George Ann, yes, approval of the previous meetings. George? I approve. John? I approve. Okay. Um, Want to start on the new business? Uh, reviewing the pumping information and chlorinization reports for April. There's no big change besides All right. that. Well, besides, we can, uh, we'll, we'll take besides, a vote on. Wait a minute. Those, besides, um, that you don't have to vote on, Georgia. All right. The only thing I could say about that stuff is the issues still having issues with that chlorine pump now that the pressure is climbing. All right. Which I emailed the guy from Webbs this morning. Much more cause. I'm hoping, hopefully, you can come down this week or beginning of next week. Because I think he wants to go, he's to go to an LMI pump which will be no problem for the pressure where he says, what he said tells me with these pumps, they're good. I know they say they're good to hundred pounds, but he said anything over 80, they really start struggling and we'll get the thing going flow pace because I just have a feeling when these booster pumps and that go online and you know what I mean? Who the, the, Gallons per minute is going to go crazy. Yeah, I mean, it might go way up. It might come way down. So hopefully we'll get it full pace so I don't have to come down here every half an hour. So the water that's going to feed the village is going to come down here, just come out of here. Yeah. Up there. Yeah. Up to the tank and then it just comes out of the... Yeah, we'll get to that. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's on here. <laughs> Whoops. All right, go ahead, Georgia. All right, we'll take up the, the new business then. Um, I think you kind of covered the chlorination. Uh, Pines, Plains water quality issues. You want to enlighten us a little bit about that? Yeah, I sent... You probably got it. The thing with the, with the, I don't know if you call them complaints or what you want to call them, but the issues with their water. Right. The issues with their water. I do have, I got an email into the lab. They do have, I did take some water samples since. When was this? Last selectman meeting, maybe two selectmen's meeting. A couple weeks ago when I was at the select board meeting, they were on there and they brought up the issue and we're talking about stuff. And since then, I mean, I everything I was told is probably an iron bacteria issue that's giving you the sulfur smell. Where's that coming from? Where's your iron? Where's your iron? Hi. Right line? In town? It's below the limits, but it's up there. We just, we have high water, high, high water. Well, point three. Did he say a lot of harm? Yeah. Right. What do we got? Point oh, yes. hmm? That's the same. Wait a minute, I actually can. The manganese. There is no manganese. I have the last lab results. <laughs> John's going to have to speak up a little bit because we yeah, don't hear him too well. I'll do something different. I should be able to hear it. Uh, let me find it. On, maybe this computer. I just this is this is all news to me, guys. But you know, I know we had a manganese. I know iron and manganese tend to dance together in, in groundwater. So didn't know what the level of iron was. So pulling out the manganese, we're not going to. You know, if the iron is below the limit, and if people are. I mean, I started reading what people are doing down there in the different treatment processes. Some of them really don't know what they're dealing with and they're taking staff in the dark, but others have hired people to come in. And, right, you know, which is where I think 
like I was talking with you again, I think they're what they're looking for is help from our side. Like me and George Ann were talking where, you know, I mean, the public can go and they'll get people to come in and test their water and say, okay, you need to buy this filter. Oh, easy. I'll, I'll sell you something. <laughs> where we probably have, you know what I mean? Where we don't need to deal with the ones trying to sell us the stuff, <laughs> I guess. Well, I was surprised. That, uh, yeah, I guess uh, from iron bacteria to the sulfur because they're you know, their respiration, but the sulfates are really low. It's 27 is in the Supreme Conference Report, and the, the guideline for National Secondary Drinking Water Regulation for sulfur is, sulfate is 250. So I don't see where they're getting sulfur out of the snow out of the sulfates. So right, like, and the weird thing is, is sounds like that now. But our stuff. It's not everywhere in the house. Right. It's certain ones are like. My bathroom faucet upstairs only, or my kitchen faucet downstairs. You're going through. Yeah. Wayne, what did you smell out of the hydrant when you took the test? No, nothing. It's hard outside because. I mean, you're out in open air. I don't I mean, I, I'm, I, I mean, I've been, what I've been testing for every day, I'll go there every day or at least every two days, every other day. And I'll test just to make sure, see what the chlorine residual is. And since I've been testing it, I, the lowest I've seen is a 0.35, which should be plenty to kill bacteria. Doesn't make much sense. The only thing I smell is chlorine when I take a drink of water. Right. Yeah. I, I never, I've never, I didn't think sulfur. I mean, I know there's got to be some calcium because of the white stain that you get fillings, yeah. but there's certainly manganese is gone. And uh, I, I don't see, in my way, I'm not seeing much of an issue with iron. It's not like a lot of precipitate coming out in our sinks. Uh, it's just the whiteness with the calcium, which is maybe could address that with a with a, a neutralizer but even then in other words another filter thing is put it through yeah. you know tubs rollades just, just give it calcium carbonate to take it out anyway i can't think of anything i know well, look for it. if i could i can't remember it's here. I just can't remember. I could search for, but I for some reason <laughs> who actually does our testing. Oh, good. I know it's Houstonic Basin, but it oh. doesn't. That's not the email. Of, oh, there it is. HBST. Smart. Red staining is not going to They got iron, but it's inconsistent. Not everybody's got it. Right. And then the one, I can't remember what his name is, the one resident that said they put a filter system in to completely remove the manganese. Now they have a TDS of 191, huh. which I don't know for sure. That's why I'll have a lab test for it, but I'm. 99% positive that is probably the flakes of manganese coming off the water main. That's not that much. <laughs> I mean, the TDS guy, secondary standard is 500. Yeah. So, you know, and the TD, I mean, you know, anyway. And the hardest that's on the wasn't that much. That's either. our last. Okay. I'm here. I don't want to hold this up. I no, to, I, I need to learn more. To I learned this meeting's probably going to be long. <laughs> Oh, I gotta get my water bottle in the car. Right, right back. <laughs> uh, you guys want to see these lab results? Yeah, what? you can. You can send them, and we'll print them. All right. Uh, for. I 
filled it up with ice and everything because I figured it'd be here a while. Okay. Uh, you should get them. No bacteria. That's good. Oh, there's the iron. That's the raw one. What's the difference between raw and finished? Iron. Yep. These filters, these filters, they said no. What it, do you remember? I don't remember if they said it take out some of the iron, but it, no. It was the higher the iron content, they'll actually grab a little bit of arsenic out of it. Yeah. You got any arsenic to worry about? It's close. Yeah, well. Yeah. <laughs> it ain't over the number. Don't yeah, we don't have to worry about it, but it's, it's there. I mean, it's in all water. So the finished water, the, the raw water was, for iron was 0.13. The finished water was less than 0.05 of iron. Yeah, that's what so it's grabbing some of the iron now. Yeah. And your manganese starts at 0.376. What does it end up at? 0 0.026. Which is nice. 0.37. That was already. <laughs> right. No, the filters are doing awesome. That's why I, I'm gonna, I asked the lab, the lab's when they're around next time they're going to come down and we'll grab a sample of water from down there and have them test it for iron manganese same thing they do down here but from a sample from over there i mean it's a few hundred bucks for them to do it but at well, least we can find out if, be, see uh, if there's any you'll see if there's any difference or not Right. I mean, I can take my little handheld thing and go do it, but it's not very accurate. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I would assume all these houses have, you know, pecs or copper yeah. with plastic. Well, stuff. one of them said he changed all this stuff to copper, but still gets the smell. Now, I had a guy from Mass Rural come down. Maybe you want to read it. Here, uh, is that all? Uh, what's, is it plastic pipe? The mains down there? Yeah. And the main, George, I believe the mains are all plastic too, right? He, George left. He went to get the printed out thing. He'll be oh. back. But this, uh, we'll bring this up too. He asked a question about the mains are all. Yeah, that's the L900. Okay. So you got Which, plastic pipe going with the copper pipe going with the plastic pipe. Where the hell is the iron bacteria coming from? No, no, there's no copper in between. Yeah, I know, but if, you, if you've got plastic lines in the, in the ground and a plastic line feeding the house yep. and it goes in the copper, probably in the packs or whatever they got, yep. uh, where's, where's the iron coming from? It'd have to be coming from somewhere in the maze. You don't have iron maze. I don't believe so. so and where's the iron bacteria going to grow up yeah. if you're flowing water? Talking with... It shouldn't be any iron bacteria. Yeah, I can't remember what this guy's name is. Bruce, maybe? <laughs> Well, the only iron main we have is a 16 inch, and that's ductile iron. But that's that's cement coated, though. But it's coated. I mean, that's I, I I'm just thinking from the distribution angle. If your water quality is, you know, it's it's for our, from our purposes, there's, there's not like there's high iron in the water. There's no manganese in the water. It's it's well within parameters. It's good water quality on those levels. And you don't have enough sulfates to start to cause sulfur. You know, where, where are you getting iron sulfide gas from? Right. You know, other than, <laughs> other than, you know, something happening with iron bacteria or for sulfates, and you know, this is combining, stuff's combining with chlorine, and I don't know, that, then it would be all over the system. Right. The, this, I remember what his name is, but he was telling me Towns ran into, I got to email him again, because he was going to get me the info on it. He said he had it. Other towns ran into this, had the same issue with the sulfate, the rotten egg smell. Yeah. And they actually found it was a certain type of plastic that are it built inside certain fixtures. 
In the fixtures of the house? In the fixtures themselves. In the plumbing. <laughs> Not the plumbing, just the fixtures. It's, 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 the, it's the hose, like the, ho the flexible hose that's under your sink exactly. that goes, say, from the copper to the faucet. Now he that's was, where you yeah. get the initial smell, because once yeah, he people was, turn it on, it disappears in a minute. Right. He was talking at some some screen they put in certain faucets because everything's water energy now and certain fixtures have a certain type of plastic this little screen or something is made out of that the iron bacteria loves to grow on <laughs> well, plus plus george let's with the home depot you probably you should have a stainless flex line there anyway yes those houses are nice you think they use good good equipment <laughs> You know, in the houses 25 years ago, that was all hard piped right to the sink with a copper, yeah, yeah, yeah. The copper yeah, the part. Hard copper. Yeah. And now it's all the flexible, flexible lines. Right. But we got people that say that their bathroom smells, but yet the kitchen sink is okay. So right. what does that tell you in the same house? Well, That's why I, I came down, my, my brain's been going, what is it about the quality of the water, raw water and treated water here? That might cause an issue in, in, in interacting with the chemistry of the water right. pipes, and I was like, "There's nothing in my house other than the calcium." I still don't know what our hardness level really is, what calcium is, but in the meantime, you know, what they're getting doesn't make any sense. Or right. have the sulfur smell from the water quality doesn't make any sense, and certainly the people getting a little iron stain. Well, what? What are you doing? You know what's going on? Uh, the pH isn't that high, is it? I mean, the TDS. No, the pH it, it never really moves. Yeah, seven two, and the TDS isn't that high. I mean, and you got to get up into the real moderately hard to really start getting precipitates to form. Yeah, you know, so people get sitting getting iron staining. Like, why? What are you doing? What's going on? Well, a lot of the staining, hey, the George and George, you know, that all came yeah, were, from you, the mat. Right. You, know, you so open the back of your toilets; they're going to be pitch black. Yeah, I scared to realize today when we're looking at the house. I open, I went and looked at the open the back of the toilet. <laughs> she had given me one of the, uh, I guess, like in the packet they had the consumer confidence report. So I'm there going, oh, oh well, you know, I got magnets. <laughs> I went and pulled the back off the toilet and called the real estate. <laughs> but I'm putting in new toilets this summer. So <laughs> <laughs> well, it should be manganese it should be manganese. I mean, it's not manganese free, but it's. Not you got damn close. It's not enough iron to worry about. It's no, I, I mean, I agree with you. But I'm just, yeah, you know, I mean, I'm trying to figure out, I don't know, I guess, how do we figure out what's causing this, this it's issue? The only, it's the only place in town. See, we don't know. Like George Ann said, her neighbor at one point had it out of a faucet. Yeah, I mean, but we don't. It was only out of cold water. Yeah. And you know what I mean? Faucet. I don't know because it could be other places in town. It's just nobody saying nothing about it. Yeah. Well, it sounds from these people that it, it dissipates. It's there and then it goes away. And then they say it's not another faucet. Right. Well, no. I mean, when they get it, it sounds like they get it. They open the faucet. They let it run for a couple seconds. It's gone. Yeah. It's not like it's a constant smell. I mean, I thought at one point it's like, well, Maybe it's the faucet doesn't get used used enough, and the trap dries up. And when you, you know what I mean. And then when you turn the water on, a little air bubble goes backwards, so you get a little bit of sewer gases. Oh, I, can, I get that out of my kitchen sink all the time. Yeah. Okay. Who knows what's in that drain? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I think you got it. You might have the answer right there, George. Is the local localized thing in their fixtures? That gives them a, a brief thing, and at least we can do is, is try, you know, give them some information that's more supportive of them. Right. That's. I mean, that's. I guess where I'm going with this. So I'm having the water tested, and like I said, I know I've been doing the chlorine residuals, and the chlorine there should be plenty of chlorine left down there. Yeah. That much. I mean. Well, chlorine, it only leaves here at like 0.45, and it's the lowest I've seen over there is 0.35. So there's really nothing eating chlorine nothing, up anywhere. There's nothing eating chlorine. There's not a, if there was a lot of iron, it would be, it would be eating it up with the iron. Right. If, a lot, if there was any, uh, any TDSs that were 
positive charge, like calcium, it would, it would eat up. Yeah, eat up the core, which it doesn't seem to be doing. So. Well, you're moving enough volume to it. That's probably why it's not a lot of contact. Right. It's not sitting there stagnant. Right. But in people's houses, it may be. It might be sitting stagnant, you know, for a while. Yeah. And, and what is, so what's, what's it, eight inch going around that circle? Or? Everything. Right, George? Everything in town is either eight or 16. Yeah, there's nothing in between. So that's all eight inch. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think one. the only 16 is up and down Christian Lane. <laughs> Well, it goes all the way out to the industrial park. Well, right, yeah. Well, but, I think eight inch, those houses are moving enough water through them not to have water stagnating in those. No. Lines. With the amount of irrigation that they do out there, there's. Yeah. Be <laughs> I went through that neighborhood the other day, my bike's checking it out. You can tell it was irrigating on nice, less lawns. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we could jump back to that quickly. The point is, it's been. I'd have to look on this one, but I think we're going on our sixth straight day of the pumps. And last night was the first day it really didn't refill the tank. We got to do some public education. <laughs> All right, so I'll get those water tests done. Anything else I should head for? Hey, does anybody have anything else I should try or head for and look into? No, I would say as long as you test the water out there. And the other thing is maybe get permission from a few of the houses and you could take a test from their outside faucet or give them a bottle to test for the first, you know, half a minute in the morning. After the well, I mean, for the for the manganese iron test, it doesn't need to sit. You can just go grab the water and take it. You know, what I mean, it's not like a lead and copper where it's going to sit so long. For these ones, you can just. I'll bet you if you, if, if you do sample, I bet you if you test it, with, you know, sulfur compounds, you get nada. Yeah, you know, probably get nothing. You know, if it's gaseous, it's an SOC test. If you just do a pure regular water test, what are you going to get? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I have a hard time saying we should start testing each individual house when you know the obligation of the systems provide adequate, you know, water. I mean, standards with adequate pressure and volume and all that. And we're doing that. That and I mean, I think the other thing they're looking for is someone or something. How do you word it? To say this water is safe to drink. Yeah. I'm more than glad to do that. I mean, I, well, that's it's hard. It's like, uh, how do you get people there? They're not going to go knocking door to door and just tell them, but you know, we can put. No, but that's what I'm saying. I mean, it'd be nice to put something together. Yeah, I mean, with some kind of data or something, right, so they don't have to. Yeah, I mean, so the residents, no matter where they are, not just saying down there, but any resident can feel safe that, look, here's not just our word on it, but here's raw data that says the water is safe to drink. Well, that's the, if they look at these things, that's what's supposed to tell them. But, uh, yeah. yeah. They, they should be getting them. Who does those? Me. You do. Already did it already? You already enough for the year? Isn't the other one you had is the new one, ain't it? No, yeah, it's old ones. Oh, 2018, 2019. You didn't get your water bill yet. <laughs> it, should, it should be coming in the next day or two. <laughs> well, does everybody read the Whaley Scoop? Yeah. People all read that? George and George, is that something everybody will read, the, the Whaley Scoop? I think so. Yeah. Yep. You know, because I we could put something together and give to them. Yeah, and have put an article in the scoop. It's kind of good, you know, it sounds like the people who sent these letters are clearly like grasping, they're trying, they can try and figure it out and it ain't working for them. And, and it's probably because they're getting the wrong technology. And the guy with the, he didn't want to do reverse osmosis. <laughs> That's, I'll take it all out. <laughs> 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 you get distilled water when he's done with that. So I don't know. 
But I, I'd be glad to work on that with you, just because I need to see more water. We get the water quality data together, yeah. get a little compilation of records, and then explain to people what the issues are with the water system, what we're doing to address them, and what the you know things problematic in their plumbing might do. Like these little right. Well, that's what I'm hoping to get. I get an email here or call him again because he said he had all the the data that that town did where they found it was in the fixtures. So this dude right there still got this guy. What's his name on there? Yeah, uh, yeah Brian. Bruce? No, Bruce. Bruce hey, Young. Bruce. I probably met him somewhere. I don't know. He's young. I was the first water protection guy they ever had. It was, <laughs> it was 1990. <laughs> all right, so we'll. Continue on that one then. All right. I don't think I have. I have nothing else to say on that one. No. We'll just put, let's let's let me help you out. I'll, I'll yeah, we'll get something together. This is something I can I think I can do to help you because it's like it's kind of stuff I focused on in, in the with World Water was doing training and you know, a lot of it was on water quality and doing that and did a lot of stuff around sampling water quality, water chemistry. Not a great chemist, but uh, and I work for a newspaper and I know how to write some stuff. <laughs> you guys ever see my book? <laughs> that's my publication this is the training manual in, in new hampshire and it was in vermont they use this in massachusetts they stole it <laughs> <laughs> i walked up and down their backs of new england water which I, I got wind somebody told me they were using my book and i went really and i looked it up and they, they basically xerox it took my name off it and put no mass dep in new, new england oh, waterworks jesus i lit up the bet the pizza <laughs> the dep and the guy doing no Wing of water. So, what the hell are you guys doing? <laughs> I could be use it, but Jesus, don't throw me out with the bathroom. Yeah, at least leave my name on it. Name on it. Okay. All right. So, we're done with Pine Plains for now. Yep. All right. Um, now we have to uh, talk about the center station booster pumps up. That we just got the bids for. Should be yeah, the, the last one, Sean. Which, I mean, you guys can review the two of them, but you must have read that one I sent you the thing from Brian, that email. Yeah. We're kind of the. Then, then that's the email from Brian. So the web one is, is doesn't meet criteria. They didn't send the five percent. Ah, here we go again. My mind is blank on some of this stuff. Like bond, it's not a bond. It was called a five percent something, but it's like a bond. So they're supposed to send it money. Yeah, send a check in. FERCOG would hold the check. When the bid's awarded and the contract is signed, they'd get the check back. <laughs> they didn't bother with the check. They should know better. I, I don't think so, because I don't think Webbs does a lot of whatchamacallin' it with towns. Yeah. Bid process stuff. Yeah. Like, they do a lot. Like, we've dealt with them. I've dealt with them. George has dealt with them. They do a lot like you... You call up and ask for a quote on something, no problem. But this is a little different than just quoting a price or something. Well, yeah. But their main thing is selling plumbing products, huh? Right. Installers. Yeah. Now, who put that in the, this last bid? Because it wasn't in the first bid that went out. The first bid, we didn't have FERCOG do it, so we didn't add it in there. This time, because it is a little bit bigger and a little more technical, it was just, it was easier to let FERCOG do it. You know what I mean? It's, it's kind of this lady, I can't remember her name. Not a name, but Andrea, maybe. Yeah, I mean, that's what she does up there. That's all yeah. she does, procurements and doing bidding stuff. And they sent in the money. Yes, they did. Uh, mechanical solution. They have lots of examples that they've done. Yeah. 
mechanical solutions is who we're getting the booster pumps for down here. Yeah. Which and they're the only ones that fit besides FW Web. So right. that field which qualifies so we go back out and accept it. The well, the problem is we can't. Unless we completely change something on the bid, you can't yeah. rebid. There we go. Um, I forgot to put these. <laughs> well, how much, do, how much do we have budgeted for this? Uh, 79. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> That's down here. <laughs> up here for this one? Yeah. Four, 400 in. Oh. The initial. Uh, I want to say the initial, what we're, when I was doing the budgeting process, mm -hmm. I think what. I think the number we had I used for the pumps was 82,000. And they're saying 62. Yes. So I guess that's good. Yeah, it's still under budget. Under budget. I mean, this is a hard number, the 82,000, because when we initially did it, it was going to be two pumps for the domestic and one big pump for the fire pump. Right. But then the more the engineers and that dug into it, and started looking in this stuff and then this the guy they were working with he recommend going to three smaller pumps for the fire side of it and three pumps for the other side of it and he said it would actually be cheaper than I'm one big one that. so what do we need to move to accept the bid yeah i would say somebody's going to make a motion to accept Right? Yeah, to accept whoever's bid and then vote on it. Well, I make a motion that we accept the bid from Mechanical Solutions. I second it. Okay. Um, I give my vote for it, George. I'll vote for it. John? I'll vote for it also. Okay, so the vote has been approved by all three members. <laughs> <coughs> All right, we're good with that one. Okay, no, any water projects for the future? Okay, let me try to explain this one. <laughs> Not, we're not going to talk, talk about the uh, road along the uh, to get to the who's the post. <laughs> oh, we don't want to trash the cemetery. Yeah, we'll get to that one. <laughs> this one comes to play. I can't remember what the grant's called, the money's called, or whatever it's called, but the town's getting money for infrastructure. Oh, right, right, right. Whoa, blah, blah, blah. So the selectmen were looking for. I guess say a list and maybe reasons why of possibilities of what the money could be used for. So, I mean, if you just start rambling off stuff, I'll write it down. But I think one of the things you, they have to be dig ready, I guess you'd call it. What's the pot that's coming from? Begins uh, with an A. I don't know if that's bright now. <laughs> and I think it's like four, four and a quarter. It's a big, mm -hmm. it's a big chunk of money. It's not to say they'll use it on water projects, but there's anything. I mean, there must there's got to be some objectives in behind it. You have to it's got to be dig ready. Like I don't know if we could use it for. Because I mean, definitely a project for the future is finding a new well. Yeah. But I don't think we could use it for the planning. 
maybe because you're just trying to find a new well. If you wanted to use it for developing or installing that well, probably not because you haven't found where that well is going to go yet. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. I'm sure there's stipulations. I don't know them all. I guess really what they're looking for is just hydrogeologic investigation. For yeah, the water source. yeah, they're looking for this like a, a list of things you could we could use the money for. You know what I mean? I mean, I could name off a few of them. They could connect Egypt Road. Mm -hmm. uh, then you guys can fill in. That's good, ready? Yeah, except for we could get it to the railroad track. The railroad track. Uh, you got, then you could connect Swamp Road. I don't know if it can be used, but for the generator down here, the center of town. You got a generator for Westbrook Road. Yeah. Times two. Uh, I thought there was another one I thought of, but I can't think of it now. Yeah, they just. Um, like, huh? Can we put these in priority? Just not can randomly we? list them? Yeah, no, I, I think the easiest way is, unless you want to screw around with it now, is. If we all just, if we just ramble off ideas, I'll write them down, I'll put them on a piece of paper. And yeah, yeah I mean, then I can send them to you through and we can kind of prioritize them. Yeah. I mean, we can do that right now off the bat. But. <laughs> well, those are the ready things. I mean, if you want to dig ready, that's hard, hardware money. Right. I mean, it, it, Most of these are dig ready. Have a consultant do an exploration for a possible well site. I don't know if that would meet the criteria of this thing. I'll wait down here. I can't think of any other ones. I'm sure there well, is. Then the next one would be is going up Route 5 and connecting to the end of Long Plain Road. Going underneath 91, underneath the railroad tracks. On... Where, where you, which end are you talking, George? The north end, going up Route 5, going up toward oh, the oh. diner, going up toward the diner, All right. and then going across, and you could connect to the end of Long Plain Road. Yeah, you could. That's a lot of pipe. Yeah, is that one? I mean, that one's doable. Yeah, the big thing would be getting under 91 in the tracks. Right. I mean, a nice one like me and you always talked about would be getting one end or both ends of Long Plain Road to River Road looped together, but I don't, I don't know if we'd ever see that happen. It's a lot. It's a lot of wet ground. Right you got to go. Well, yeah, one end you got to go through wetlands and swamp. The other end you got to go through. Is it considered a burial ground or just Indian? Yeah, you'll never get through that. Is that? Is that? That is sacred ground. You'd have to go to the south a lot and then swing back to the north. Yeah, to get behind around all that. The industrial pipe. Really? Down yeah. there? Yeah. It's farming now. Are they farm it down there? No. Oh, on the hillside? Yeah, no. They they raise mums out there. They can farm. All right. I just I, you know I, Yeah, they can farm it from what I understand until unless somebody wants to come in to do a dig. So you're talking about between the industrial park and the, and the slope, it goes down to yes, okay. yep. Oh, yeah, you drive around with a golf cart, you'll find all kinds of arrowheads and stuff. Cool, <laughs> you know, they've been dead a long time. You know, I mean, <laughs> you want to pick over my house when I've been going 200 years, go right ahead. <laughs> the artifacts be worth the hell of a lot, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, them two ends, it'd be nice to do them, but I don't, I mean, them are huge projects. I mean, a nice one, like I always said, a nice one to get done would be Egypt Road. One, to close the loop, but two, it would give us a second way that the water can get to the other side of town. Yeah, I mean, 
you don't really notice it, but right now the water crosses from the center of town to the east side of Christian Lane. Mm -hmm. So if something happens in that section, there's no water in that east side of town. Right. Right. If we can connect Egypt Road and something happens there, yeah, you'll lose some volume because it's only an eight inch fight now, not 16, but it still should be enough for drinking and showering. All right, well, yeah. why don't we leave this and um, if everybody can keep thinking about it and then. Yeah, if can, you come up with anything, just tell me or shoot me to the whatever. list. I'll add it to the list and then I can send the list around and. Yeah, to prioritize it. Yeah. All right. Well, town meeting articles. You've seen the two of them. One's our budget. And, oh, no, I probably didn't send you the thing, did I? Did I send it to you, George? Do you, did I yep. send you this? I, I saw it. I, saw, I, I, didn't I don't think it. I printed it out, though. No, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. One was our budget, and the other one was $5,000 for the other half of the generator for Westbrook. Now you want to talk about water rates and fees. Well, you got to vote on that one first. Oh, to approve the articles? All right, I vote that we approve and accept the two articles on the town meeting warrant. Second. All right, vocal vote. George Ann, yes. George? Yep. John? Yes. Okay, all three members vote in favor. Yes, no oh, big one. All right. The water rates and fees. What's the rate now? Four sixty-five. For how much? A thousand. So it's four sixty-five per thousand. And it's currently the only thing we charge. That's it. That's it. Okay. Ooh, it's can of worms. It, <laughs> it's can of worms. Yeah. What's what's is there really? Minimum? Is there a minimum? <laughs> huh? Is there a minimum? No minimum. No. Let's get to a point. Where the rate goes up. None of that stuff. We vote on it. Yeah, I this that's I think John's getting to where I'd like to see it. <laughs> like, I mean, I think we're one of the only towns that I don't know for sure, but I would almost guess that we're probably one of the only departments that only charge per thousand gallon with nothing else. <laughs> I don't know anybody. I mean, I've seen a lot of flat rates over the years and stuff like that. I just everybody pays the same. I've seen this kind of stuff, but uh, usually there's a minimum. Yeah, know, minimums or, and, and, and some and it's it's idealistic to have a, a, a stepping up rate if you go over. What's your? I mean, what, we bill quarterly. No, six six a year. Yeah, six, every six months. Yeah. So uh, a, a household, you sort of assume you know at a high end maybe four hundred gallons a day. And then you multiply that times that, you know the year or whatever or half the year, or uh, what's half? How many days in half a year? One hundred eighty-two, one hundred eighty-three. Say one hundred eighty-three. Zero zero. What's twelve? Rates of thirty-two, thirty-three, four ones of four, five six seven. So you know, basically, you could say you could have you round it out high, a high usage for a household for domestic purposes. Mm -hmm. Forget irrigation. It would be about 75,000 gallons no, that's for normal. six months. That's normal. Oh, no. Yeah, that's our normal use. <laughs> which, right. is, which is fine. But, you know, anything over that should be a higher rate. 
so that if you want to irrigate and, and use 120,000 gallons in, in a six more. month period, that's fine, but you got to pay for it because yeah. we need the money to keep the treatment plant operating and expand it. Yeah, because I mean, a big thing that's keeping us, what do you call it, afloat, <laughs> I guess in terms, is you're getting them six, them at least five to six hookups every year. You know what I mean? But you know that's going to stop soon. Yeah. So now once that stops, you know what I mean, you need to make up Forty thousand dollars a year that you're not going to collect from them. Yeah, you know I mean, I can see, like we've talked about before, we shouldn't be paying for testing backflows. No, I, I, I can see having minimums. I can see having step rates. I mean, other towns, some towns have different rates for what it's being used for. Ag could would be one rate, industrial is another rate. You know, I don't know how technical and how many different steps you want to have on water rates, but I definitely, I, I think something needs to change. Because if you maintain just the charging per thousand gallons, I mean, in 10 years, you could be at $8 a thousand gallons. <laughs> well, for, at 465 per thousand, 75,000 gallons cost you 350. Yeah. 350 bucks. So it's $700 per year, which is not insignificant. Yeah. You know, and some people won't care. Some would be upset. Right. But if they're, if, I guess, if you're doing it by the thousand. And I don't, I don't know if you need to raise that. Is that what you're saying? I don't know if we need to raise the rate. I, somehow, I think we need to figure out how to, how to make more. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's, I don't know if you guys look at the budget sheets, but it's close to what, I mean, I guess what I'm getting at is we used to be pretty good with the enterprise fund. There was like 80 something, $90,000 sitting in it. But now with these booster pumps and the filters, which I don't know if the pot guys are coming into town no more. So I don't know if we're going to get that back. You know I mean, our the enterprise fund or retained earnings, I guess you'd call it. I would guess is down to maybe 20, 17 or 20,000 only. And but that, what's happening behind AIs? Is there somebody coming in there with a greenhouse? Yes. Now, are they going to want water from us or no? Uh, for the greenhouses, I don't know. For what I've heard is they want to convert CNA repair into their, call it production facility, which will require them to sprinkler that. Also, that, that should be another tie-in too, because that's running right. off of AI's house now. And Hatfield, right. is that off of Hatfield water too, right? Yes, I've been talking with Tony and I told Tony I'd keep him in the loop on what's going on down there. <clears throat> but I don't know for the growing, the greenhouses out back, I've heard they want to put their own wells in. This so I don't know if they'll be looking for town water for that. Yeah, the same thing that Chang does. There should be a good water supply back there, I would think. Right. I would think we'd want to encourage anybody who wants to irrigate it in a lot of skill. But get your own water yeah you know frankly uh, it's i know it's a user but is, is in the future is our issue having more money come in and, and try to provide as much water as we can or have a limited supply of water and ability to produce it we can't go skyrocketing towards you know maxing right. out our, our the our thing product. that the tough thing is i mean since i've been on what i've seen is you need them big the commercial businesses that use that water and it keeps that low for the homeowners. Keeps the rate you know what I mean? Without them, I mean, that's a lot of, yeah, it's a lot less water that's produced, so it doesn't cost you as much, but you still have 
what do you say? You still have all the same testing to do. You know what I mean? The stuff that costs you the money, it's all still there. So it's a, yeah, it's a tough one. It's nice to have them few big water users that pay a chunk of the budget. They're paying five, 465 per thousand. Right. So they're using a lot of water. Yeah. So the more I use, it's a benefit to me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know what the, what's the point. I mean, it's something, it's not something we got to figure out right now. But I know. But you know what I mean, it's something I would say, I don't know if it needs to happen by next fiscal year, July 1st, but I would say I would think maybe we want to try getting it in place. You know what I mean? For the next billing cycle. Yeah, I mean, take the summer. Usually the next time we read the meters is in October. So maybe take the, sum take the summer, figure this out, and then read the meters in October. And from the time we read that meter, that's when the old stuff ends and the new rates begin. I think it'd just make a smoother transition for everything. <laughs> But yet, we definitely got to figure out something. Wasn't it Hatfield or South Deerfield that has a lot of extra charges other than the gallons? They both do. They both charge. You get a service fee for having the water. You get, I can't remember if it's Hatfield or South Deerfield, but they charge you on top of that. They charge you for the size meter you have. Meter service. Yeah. I mean, there's a bunch of different things. It's just how in depth do you want to go? You know what I mean? I don't, I mean, I always looked at it as we need to make enough to keep enough in the bank for, I always had a figure of $50,000 in my head because that would cover if them wells all of a sudden something happened and we had to replace them. Mm, that ain't enough. Uh, <laughs> that ain't enough. <laughs> well, no, but you know what I mean? I don't uh, Yet I can't see raising and doing all this stuff to put and hold a half a million dollars in the bank just to say you have it. You know what I mean? That needs a plan behind it. Right. I mean, a capital improvements plan is like call your enterprise fund is, has to have the structure to it of, of looking ahead, say 10 years, and what is the equipment I will need to replace over the next 10 years and estimate some costs and then starting to put money aside to have that cost. When you do right. That. That's all. Well, yeah. Within the next 10 years, you're going to have to replace the screens in the pump and the wells. Yeah, the wells. Oh, yeah. That's, There's that's no doubt problem. about it. Yeah. yeah. And as of, you know, I mean, if them pumps went down yesterday, it'd be pretty tough with what we got in retained earnings to replace them. Right. You'd be going off, you'd be borrowing money. Yeah. Of course, you know, with interest rates where they are, it's not such a bad deal. Yeah, no, <laughs> they're pretty, that's a problem. they're pretty low, but. <laughs> I don't, I mean, I, I would think to me, it would be, you know, a good idea. You might keep the price for volume the same, but, you know, institute an annual fee. Yeah. You know, for, for a, resident, mean, yeah. a residential fee, then there's the institutional fee or, or a business fee, depending on the size of the business. You kind of get an idea depending on what volume you need, what your costs might be for us. So that, you know, in other words, instead of people saying, you know, you sort of, I know it makes sense to have it, you pay for what you use, yeah. you pay for volume. And there's some sense to, to having it step up after you go over a certain volume. But if, if your mix is essentially large using industrial, agriculture, industrial, whatever you want to call it, and residential, residentials are all in the same ballpark other than you know, who irrigates. Them. Right. For the they step up into. Then they should, that's where the step up comes. Yeah. But for everybody who's on a residential, you got that one, you know, half inch or three quarter you got per meter. Yeah. And, and you're, being you and, and us, and it provides the thing. And so there's the volume of the water and it's paying your, your cost of the operation. Let's say it was $100 a year per household. And for a business, maybe it's $1,000 a year, whatever whatever makes sense. Yeah. So that you get some extra revenue out of that and not make it feel like the water rate's real high. Right. You know, people start comparing. You, you start charging them $7, 1000 for water. They're going to find out who's paying that. <laughs> yeah. And Jesus, they're going to find out, Jesus, oh, so-and-so, my old buddy up there in Bot in Vermont, he pays $200 a year. 
<laughs> All yeah. the water he needs, it ain't got no manganese. You know, so you know, who knows? Right. I mean, that's that's why it's hard. Yeah, I mean, for like it's, it, I can't compare ours to anybody else's because no. yeah. I mean, most no. everybody else's per thousand gallons probably a quarter of that. Right, the because they can have all these other fees on top of it. That'll be a homework assignment for everybody yep. to figure out rates, whether how we break it down or add a fee or whatever. Well, that's what I'm saying. I think it'd be something if we give ourselves. Yeah, you know, I mean, let's because I usually read them in the end of end of October. So if we give ourselves to September to come up with what would you want to call it? The rates in free thing. Because then it's <clears throat> it'd have to go in the paper for two weeks and then you got to hold a public notice and all that. Then you can finally vote on it. And like I said, we could leave it as when you vote on it, you could leave it as these will go into effect the day after the meters are read in October or whatever. Okay. So it, it, it's, you don't have to worry about rushing, putting them on the last reading. All right. So you got two, two assignments so far. I can give you guys all kinds of homework. Wow. Well, that's two. Public info. What is, the second? <laughs> what is the race? What's the third one? Oh, projects. Projects. <laughs> The projects and the water fee are two, pro two uh, assignments. Forgot to get the price for that. Now we got to find her. I don't even remember where her name is. All right. So, any further discussion on the fees, or or you want to leave that till we reassess it when we get our information? Well, I think I'll just. Yeah, I mean, I'll move it to uh, an old business thing and just put it on the agenda for every month. Yeah, we'll keep talking about it. Yeah, do some research. It's going to be wicked hot pretty soon, you know. <laughs> There's no mini splits I put All on. right, we've got to take a vote on the engineer's proposal. <clears throat> All right. Discussion on that? Yeah, I'm trying to find the price. I'm trying to remember what her name is. I think figure seven thousand dollars. I think it was six thousand something. Uh, I'm trying to remember how long ago it was. Yeah, it was, it was six thousand something dollars. So figure seven thousand dollars, which um, she just did Tony's from in Hatfield, and he's having her do his for what you might call it. Uh, Williamsburg. I mean, I can show you what ours is, but it's it's really nothing special. It, <clears throat> and it's actually it's from the day from the day we put the booster pumps in here, and they come and do their final inspection. I have 90 days to update the two of them. Or I don't know what they'll probably yell at us. But the center of town booster station is that's one of the whatchamacallit's uh, stipulations that both of them have to be updated before they'll give the final sign off on it. 
I'm thinking uh, hopefully she'll over here. Yeah, thirty five hundred dollars a piece, so seven grand. I'll send these to you guys. <clears throat> I'm thinking maybe I can get her to, which I don't see why she wouldn't. Yeah, you know, I mean I'll pay her. I don't think she's gonna want the money until she's done, but I'm thinking I could pay her half of it out of this year's budget and then the other half after July 1st on next year's budget. Yeah, that'll split it up. Right. Because I I would imagine if I ask her to start it now, it's going to take her probably longer than a month to finish it. As I said, I... I've updated the one we have, but it's really, I don't know, it's, I'm thinking it'd be better if we got one done professionally once and then now, you know, now that you have it, now you can just keep updating it. Yeah, the that's a good idea. Have, what, well, yeah, the one we kind of have is, I mean, me and Billy put it together. You know what I mean? Which <laughs> he's a landscaper, I was a farmer, so it's <laughs> yeah. I'm sure I'm sure if you pulled the O and M out, you could probably figure out what you're doing. But you know, I mean, I seen Tony, she comes down, she takes pictures of everything. You know, I mean, it puts it in a nice folder. So you want a motion to accept the seven thousand dollars and we'll split it? Well no. I guess it's if you want to do it or not. Or do you want me to try to update what we have? What are we doing? Our emergency response oh, plan in the O&M manual. Just that part? Huh? Well, if we can get it done once professionally and then keep updating it ourselves, it'd probably be worth it. So I think talking about an O&M manual total? Or just, just the like total. 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 Yeah, because really the only thing we have now that I keep updated is down here. Right. Which one of these times the DEP probably won't like that. No, like I said, like <laughs> nice. I mean, it's, it helps to have some good call when, when it was. Right. Because like Billy even said, he goes, yeah, I used to be able to go down there and I could do it. Yeah. But he goes, the stuff has changed so much down there. And now he goes, <laughs> I wonder if, uh... I'm like, well, I've been updating it, Billy, but yeah, I'm trying to think of Billy's. Yeah, I sat in on that uh, seminar thing they did online this past winter about various funding sources and stuff. And I think I saved it, but I, I, really was, I don't know if they had money for stuff like that. Yeah, that's what she... I sent it to you guys. That's what she gave me for a quote and her references and stuff. So yeah, I guess all, what I'm looking for is do you want to do it or do you want me to go with and try updating what we've got? I think we well, do it. I think it. we should yeah, have uh, a professionally done one for once to see. Um, and if it's something you can update yearly. Well, I think once you, yeah, I think once you have it, you know what I, I mean? Know what you need. Yeah, now it's if something gets added or that, it shouldn't be you're taking out. You can just add or subtract it, I would say. Right. So she has, I mean, you could particularly want all the information from you about the, op the operations. And right. The right. You know, that can be just, you know, all the, all the whatever paperwork you've got. Equipment as it came in, right? You know, I, I just keep it one place. You know where it is. Yeah. There's now. If she does a nice job, it's not a whole lot of money. 
So, no. Uh, well, I even, I asked, was it Lynn? Yeah, I think I went and asked Lynn because Lynn's the one that's going to deal with the town's emergency response plan and yeah. all that. And I asked her, I said, I don't know. I said, is this a good price or not? And she goes, it's actually on the cheaper side. Yeah, <laughs> well, you know, I, I, it'd be nice to see if they put something together that's functional as opposed to like some consultants put a whole bunch of bullshit and make it look big. Yeah, no, I seen Tony's. Tony's is nuts. You know what I mean? It's it looks professional, but you know, what I mean, I know nothing about how Tony's thing works over there, but I think I could grab that manual and read through it and figure it out. Well, just just looking at the draft of a kind, she has a template. She yeah, she does it for she's got a template. She does for people. She's got a template. She's got to plug in. <laughs> Otherwise, she couldn't do it so cheap. Yeah. But you know that's okay. It's it'll be good. I don't see. I mean, it sounds good to me. You need to have someone out. <laughs> we have it. It's just yeah. It's going to be a lot of work for me to update it yeah. for these guys to make them happy again. Well, the biggest thing is a lot has changed in two years. <sighs> Well, All right, then I'll make an motion that we vote to hire this engineering proposal for the ERP and the OM. Anybody second it? Second it. All right, then a vocal vote. George Ann, yes. George? Yes. John? Yes, sounds good. Okay, so the motion everybody voted for and it carried. Yeah, and like I said, I'm going to see if she'll start it now. And I can't imagine it. I don't know. I'll ask her how long it takes. But if she gets it done within a month, I'll just ask her if she could bill me half of it for now and then half after July 1st. Well, plus it keep the... Fair. I think she'll do it. Right. Which I think he told me they'd be happy that we have that now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they like paperwork with it. Yeah. All right, last on our agenda. Well, what a guy did this whole thing, couldn't it? No. Yeah. No. Water meter hookups in hardship cases. <laughs> okay. This, where this comes from is the select board. Okay, I gotta get a plug. I'm running low. Oh, oh she's on battery. <laughs> You get 220 that thing, George. <laughs> yeah. Solar powered, solar yeah, so powered. Jeez, those those women I bought, I bought ones that bought that house, they got they got nine kilowatts that they put up up there. Really? And I figured the only reason they did it is well, you don't use that much a two bedroom house. Yeah. And maybe five uh, five kilowatt would be big enough. Six is a little bit nice. But I think they did it for the kickback. Yeah. I don't know what to do with all the electricity. <laughs> This is for the selectman wants to what? Hook up, hook up these. The selectman, I can't say all the selectmen. One of the selectmen is pushing for coming up with ways to help out oh, the ones in the center of town that can't pay the hookup fee when the time is due. That's what they sign up for. So they're looking for options. The water department. I can tell you what to do. <laughs> to me. <laughs> huh? The water department doesn't have any options. We're not a bank. Um, if the town wants to, the selectmen want to initiate some banks or whatever, that's entirely up to them. You get a new truck in That? Yeah. No, we got that. George, when we get the truck? Last year? Yeah, about a year ago. Maybe a little more. Yeah. <laughs> Same color as the one you used to have? No, that one's the highway apartments now, that like white. Oh, uh, I, I agree with you, Jordan. We've talked about this in the greenhouse this uh, spring. Really yep. like if the selectmen got a way to help them out, that's fine, but the water department needs the money to do the job. That's true. 
Yeah. Plus the fact that they've had basically almost three years to prepare for this. So it's not something that was sprung on them. Um, when it initially happened down here, I assume some people went to the banks, other people borrowed from whoever or whatever, um, knew that there was a commitment and made it. The town, the town did set up something when we did that, because I know that we we entered into that because it was thirty five hundred dollars they wanted up front, and I forget if it was NIS or which bank it was, but one of the banks in Northampton had I think it spread it over four or five years or something the payments. But that was for a, a, a large number of people, so I don't know now if you know somebody wanted to undertake it what if there's two people you know what i mean a bank i have no idea about financing well, um, i think that's something that lynn could look into or the selectman could look into yeah i don't john, think it's john our, says we sell water we're not a bank yeah it's not our position to do this i mean you don't have the resources to carry people for five years while they decide they might want to pay right, right? there's no guarantee they're going to pay I don't know anybody in town. I, I, I first, I, I'm wondering how many people up there really would have a problem. If it was it five grand? Yeah. yeah. This day and age. Well, I can tell you this, Nicholas, maybe two years, three years ago, kind of, I guess, sent out a thing or did a survey or something. How many people might not be able to pay? Okay. And if I remember right, I think he said two or three. This past, call it February, I can't remember if it was February or March, they had their annual water meeting and the papers he sent out to all the customers or users, whatever you want to call them, in there he asked the question of, Will people need help paying blah, blah, blah. If you think you're going to contact the select contact, I can't remember if he said the select board or the town administrator or a water commissioner, not meaning you water commissioners, their water commissioners. They've heard from nobody. Brian, I think he said heard from one. So they're waving at no pitch. I'm standing up here, you haven't thrown the ball yet, and I'm swinging. Yeah, not in the hip. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can see where Jonathan's coming from, but I mean, I read. I think we got, I think we're all somewhere on the same page from last time, too. Is if, they, if the town can help them, fine, or if the, the people up there in that district, if they got anything left over, they want to pool their resources and help out people, fine. But we can't. Right. They asked to buy water from us. We're selling them water, and this is the fee for hooking up. And then the I mean, it's, it's, what are you going to do? And like I say, it's, it's one or two people. Well, it'd be different if we had a couple hundred thousand dollars in our in our. Well, no, home. they're not. And we don't. Well, I guess what I'm getting out of what you guys are saying, they're not looking for, I guess, us to finance people that can't pay. I get you. They want to tell them how to do it. Not our job. <laughs> That's what I was waiting to hear. Yeah. You got a freaking financer down there. You got an administrator. You got to figure it out. <laughs> Jeez. Well, yeah, that's that's what I was waiting to hear. <laughs> <laughs> and I did. I can tell you, I did talk with Brian and Lynn, and Amy was involved a little bit. Yesterday for, I don't know, an hour and a half or two hours. Oh, <laughs> there is ways that could possibly be done. They could maybe take, I mean, we're just throwing around ideas, but maybe the town could take some money and put it aside and use that as to pay. You know what I mean? Say there's, say there's three people that can't pay. The town could take, pay for the three people and then the town bills them to get the money back. The town acts as a bank if they want to do it that way. 
Right. I think you just stay out of those conversations with the town figure it out. I, Which your job is to run the water system. Yeah, that's all right. Okay. Uh, you know. Okay, though. Now it's done. <laughs> you know, I, I don't think I. I sat for well a year back in New York when I started doing well health protection. I was down with the Berniston boys up in Berniston once a month for about almost a year, helping them you know get a well health protection plan together. And every every month, first thing those three guys did, three people did, they had a secretary too. They even had a secretary, but they had they'd sit down and they had their list of people who were in arrears and who had already gotten one notice, two notices. And now it's pay your bill, or your water shut off. Yeah. And they would, and they took turns making phone calls. And they'd call people up at this is like seven o'clock, right after supper, saying, you know, you owe six months, or you owe a year and a half, whatever you owe for your water. And if you don't pay it tonight while we're here, your water's being shut off by nine o'clock tomorrow morning. And they all come down and write a check, <laughs> throw it on the table, yeah. cuss a little bit, but go and home. leave. They want the water; <laughs> they'll pay for it. Yeah. You know? yeah. And if people have a hard time, if if they really are, you know, clutch about it. And I'm sure you know the selectman was Tom. Can I mean, I out. still like me and George always said, just leave it as is. You charge for it. Everybody charges the same. Gets charged the same. If there's one or two at the end that can't deal with it, then yeah. <laughs> plain and simple. But you know, that's a part of that should be part of our our rate structure thing. It's like you know the shut off. You know, if you don't pay, right? We cut you off. You I think there is something. You can get oh, I forgot to put that on there, George Ann, didn't I? Yeah. To go back, <laughs> me and her were talking about that. Going back through and updating our the department's rules and regulations. Bylaws. I don't actually. I don't think there's anything in there that actually lets us do that. Well, we can do it. Well, that's no, that's me and George Ann were. When was that? It wasn't that long ago. Last week, week before, we were talking about that. Oh, yeah, it, we started on that before, but we just never got to it. And maybe like last year. Yeah, we, maybe it's something we add into with these rates and fees. We right. just kind of do it all at once. Because I'm sure if it's if it's a rule and a regulation we want to change, it'll have to go to a public That's right. public meeting. Common yeah, it will. Oh, that's fine. Well, reasons, I mean, one of the reasons for having the sh yeah. especially shut off fee and, and a turn off fee, by the way, yeah. is there's hardship cases, then there's the guy who's just slow. Yeah. He doesn't want to pay or he forgets about it, whatever. The other, that, that's where the first warning comes in. Then the second warning, it's a little note or a phone call, it's yeah. email, something. But when they don't pay and they refuse to pay, you shut them off. Yeah. And then when they realize they need the water and they come pay, you hit them with a fee for, for a shot in the water, and then you hit them with another fee to put it back on. <laughs> and they will always pay on time next time. Yeah, the next time. <laughs> you got to get people to, you know, to stimuli to, to keep them in the game. Yeah. Water's cheap. I'm sorry. It I, is. <laughs> I went out to lunch with a buddy of mine in Southbridge a couple weeks ago. I met him in Connecticut. He likes to craft beers. He bought a beer in this pub down there on the rail trail. $14.87 for a 16-ounce can of beer. <laughs> <laughs> you think he won't pay a Twenty dollars a year for water, across here. <laughs> <laughs> and there's people out here buying those guys. They're all going to treehouse right away. Yeah. Minimum purchase sixty five dollars. Yep. So we, we know what to tell the town. <laughs> That's we no, vote it, it. We just... no, I don't think I don't think there's nothing to vote on for that one. I think it's just your guys is. We need our money to run the system. Yeah. All right. Well, you can pass it along to the selectmen that we have. I will pass the book on. We, we should vote on that. <laughs> uh, make a motion to vote that I don't, we are not. I, yeah, I don't think we need to vote on anything, George. Well, it's our recommendation then. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't, I mean, yeah, maybe vote on it just to make sure. I don't think there's really nothing that's needed to vote on. I don't see it. But I mean, if you want to vote on something, it's like I'd make a motion to just put into the record that we are, we are not in a position to finance people's paying to connect to the water system. They voted to pay for it. They want to be on. We, we need the money 
to connect them and give them the water. That's it. So we can't help them with the financial side of it. All right. I accept. I uh... accept. Agree. You're second. Agree with John. Second it. <laughs> we'll take a vote. George Ann, yes. George? Yes. John? Yep. Okay, so it's on record that we're, we're in agreement that uh, we're not in a financial situation to provide money for people for hookups. Move it up. All right. Any other business, Wayne? New business? No. I can't put nothing on if I remember it anyways. What We'd have the, to wait what, to... What about the cemetery? In well, the, we're getting there. We're getting there. That's old business. That's old business. I don't have the agenda. <laughs> we're going to move on to the old business now. <laughs> yeah, so... I mean, you've seen... Can anybody make the meeting tonight? Now, that's just a Zoom meeting, right? Yeah, 5 o'clock. I don't know. I've got an appointment at 4, so I don't know if I'll be back in time or not. But. Yeah, it's the planning board. Uh, yeah, no, that's where we got to, whatever we do, we got to be off of this in an hour. <laughs> now, is the Zoom meeting on so we get the numbers to join it? Yeah, just go to the town's website. I mean, I could go to the town's website and copy and email you, but if you go to the town's website, just on the right-hand side, click on the planning board meeting and it'll pop up. Yeah, and I, I believe we're first. It's first. We can inform them that it cost the town $1,300 to get their stamped print. <laughs> yeah, but that's not so much long it is. Right, this is what everybody's looking for. So this is the road. There's the... I'm looking at with they're just talking about worrying about with us how this thing, you know, access. Yes. We don't want to pay it, we don't want this to look bad and all this other stuff. Yeah. There's gonna be a footprint there between Quan Quan and the cemetery. Mm -hmm. There's a road, right? There's you, a road. Yeah, that's the cemetery. And the that's road. there. So we, you know, the, they hide the old bodies in the back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah in the back. Yeah. All right. So what with our footprint is simply gonna be a building off of the corner and the downslope side. So I, I don't see where it's I mean I see what they're saying, but that's this is what they're looking at. This is what I'm playing. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean you I sent you the yeah. the cemeteries comments, yeah, and I yeah. sent you the historical society's comments. Or not society, <laughs> commission. And the cemetery commissions, yeah. That's their new one. This that was the original one. Well, that's the town. Oh, cemetery commissioners, okay. Yeah, this was the original one. This was their newest one. Oh, brand new. Yeah, yeah, that's why that's why I got sent to you guys late, because I said I just got this. <laughs> yeah. So I mean it seems like they're all right with it. I mean the historical commission wants me, I'll do it. It's they want to know if we could go with wooden clapboards and stand and seam roofing. And I said, well, it's, it's if it fits in the budget. What's what we, what we got there for now? The budget? No, what's the, uh, what's the building to look like? What's it? I call it tobacco barn roofing. Yeah, but what about the side? The rig, like that metal. Right. Siding, George wanted to go with that fiber board, that cement fiber board. We'll go with yeah. we From 30 feet away, it looks like clapboards. <laughs> From 20 feet away or 10 feet away, you can't tell whether it's seed or clapboards. It, it's right. You know, what I mean, that, it's like I was talking with George. That's another thing that, because our budget was set two years ago, yeah, I mean, there might not be the money to even go with that stuff now. And you might have to revert back the vinyl or something cheaper. Something in the woods that you can't see. Right. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's just, I mean, the tough thing is, is the budget was set two years ago, almost, and who knew, I mean, what, everything was going to quadruple in price in six months. 
<laughs> they're just worried about cars getting in there. They, just want, they don't want traffic. The cemetery commission. Yeah. yeah. They, want, they, want, they want it to just look nice. Yeah. Just tell them we'll do everything we can to make it look nice. Right. I mean, honestly, for me, if I was going in there to check on it, I'm not going to drive in the cemetery and turn the corner and just to park right next to the building. Yeah, I'll just park at the apron by the road and walk in there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's just me, but I get, I see their point of, well, maybe the next guy down the road won't, or you know what I mean? Well, like, uh, yeah, I hear you. And how many, how many times does somebody go down that little road in a vehicle? It looks like not at all. No, hardly ever. Because they're up in the middle. So yeah. they're actually going to the cemetery. No, they're both cemetery roads. They loop around in the back. Right. But they all connect. But all the, the graves are up there. I mean, there's graves no, there's, down there. There's, I know there's graves down there. But they're, 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 they're right along that edge. I don't know as I've looked in there, it's like, it's yeah, like, like right. everybody's up here. Yeah, no, they're, they're, they're right, right along that edge. Because that's why I told them. Because they're going to put, I don't know if you read that, they're going to put granite posts yep. along the road. And when I talked with Neil, it was yesterday or the day before. I think it was yesterday. I told him, it's like, why don't we put, yeah, you know, I mean, a, a, like a construction fence up while we're building the thing. Yeah. And then when we're done, then put the granite post. Yeah, you know, I mean, you just hate to see something wax it and you snap a granite post off now. You know what I mean? Yep. And yeah, I mean, it's all going to be in the budget. I almost got through that list, George, from RK Miles. Well, God only knows where that list is now. You know, that was what, how many months the ago? Lumber, I got through the lumber part of it and it tripled. Yeah. yeah. You just got to think from last year. Yeah. So where we were thinking that list was $6,000, the lumber is almost 18 on its own. Yeah. And like I say, I don't know what happened to the price of trusses because I never got a price out of trusses. Right. So I'm I'm guessing by the time that building's done, that 70000 that we budgeted for is probably going to be close. Yeah. It all depends on how much we do ourselves. Right. But I mean, that even building the building ourselves, that I think the cost of what the material goes went up us doing it ourselves is probably what's going to keep it under that. You know what I mean? By the time you figure the concrete and the insulation, the trusses, all that stuff, I think it's, you know I mean? It's probably pretty close. What did that concrete cost us a yard at the pump station? I don't know. I haven't got the bill yet. I'm guessing, I don't know. I'm guessing 120. I was going to say 125 a yard, maybe. Yeah, I'm guessing probably somewhere around. Me. And we'll probably, I mean, I didn't do the math, but it's probably more than 11 yards when it's done. Probably two trucks. I got a price originally when we first started, and it was 4000 for the foundation and the floor and yeah. the approach pads. But that's probably went up, oh, maybe another 25%, 30% maybe. Right. Well, yeah, right. So you add, you know what I mean? That's why I'm thinking that original budget figure that I got for somebody to build the buildings probably probably now is getting closer to going to be a true number if we, with us building it. I mean, I'm sure it's still going to be less than that, but I don't think it's going to be a ton less than that like we were originally planning. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I don't know how much electrical has went up. That, I can tell you, that went up a bunch. Because I got the. Can I talk about that yet? No, you got to talk about that next. But, anyways, I can jump into that. The quote to hook to do these booster pumps down here is almost nine grand. Yeah, so. And over there, you're talking run the wire from the street, wire in the generator, wire in the pumps, wire in the alarms, the regular outlets and lights and switches. Yeah, I mean, and I imagine, I don't, well, maybe, yeah. I mean, the 
the plumbing itself that I had budgeted for to tie the propane into the building in the generator. Now moving the tank to the front, that's going to go up. You got longer run now. Yeah, but you're talking pipe, which isn't that big a deal. No, but pipe's expensive right now. <sighs> yeah, it's just just a copper pipe, so. Yeah, but I don't know if it. I don't know. See, I don't know the specs on what this generator is going to need. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if we're if we're say sixty or seventy feet away from it, is a five eighths copper pipe going to be big enough now? I don't or know. You'll have, you you got to figure out how many cubic feet it uses. And one way, one thing we could do is put a sleeve underneath the building, so yeah. they could slide their pipe rather than go all the way around it. Right. Yeah, I guess it makes sense. Put a sleeve underneath it. Yeah. They may make you vent that sleeve, but. I don't think so, because Jake did it. No. No, he just had his inspected and they were fine with it. Hey, did we get any money from the movie theater? Did we? No, not yet. Yeah. Yeah, no, not yet. Now, what were the bags on the trailer? Was that snow? Yeah, that was the snowflakes. Now, what did that do? Disappear with water or something or? Yeah. Well, so they could wash it into the ground. Yeah. Yeah. The other snow they put on the ground, I don't know, it was like this fuzzy stuff. Yeah, they were blank. I saw all the blankets, like blankets they had. Yeah. And then they'd go around with like a big propane torch and melt it. It looked, it honestly, when I seen it the first time, I thought it was a snowbank. Yeah, it looked good. Yeah. Uh, I lost track of where we are, but cemetery oh, station. Is there anything else anybody wants to talk about? They like the snowblower being there because mm -hmm. they don't want to plow it. So you have a snowblower, a snowblower, and you don't want the snowblower to be there. Oh. <laughs> you don't get that. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got nothing more on that one unless if you guys do. Just the witch will call the planning board meetings tonight at five. But we're first on the menu, you said. I, I'm pretty sure, yeah, it's right at the beginning of their meeting. Hopefully it passes. That's, that's to approve for us to do the pump house. Yeah. But it's still going to go to the zone, which I believe is June 7th. The, is, we have to have a special... Special permit. Special permit. Oh. The terms change. I mean, special exemptions and, <laughs> and, and, and variances and the terms change across state lines. Yeah. So now on to this place. So I got a hold of Bill Webbs. He's pretty sure they should be here either into this week, next week. That's for these pumps in there. The filters. Filters. The pumps, Tom, I got a hold of him, and Tom said the factory gave him a ship date of June 4th. I'm like, <laughs> like sure, not May 24th. <laughs> they can't come quick enough. <laughs> yeah. It's Where are they like, shipping them from? I, I think their factory's in Connecticut. Okay, that won't be bad then. No, that was one of the things me and George, I was talking with George, remember George a long time ago. I was like, we really, we could save ourselves 1800 bucks if I just put a trailer behind the pickup and drove to Connecticut. <laughs> yeah. At least they don't have to come through the Suez Canal. Yeah. And uh, so I got a hold of Elm. I sent Elm an email today and asked him if we could set up some date somewhere around the 4th, tentatively, for them to wire this stuff in. So hopefully, that from outsiders. 
and hopefully by what second, third week of June, maybe we'll be able to turn them on. I would think so. Worry about it. As long as we can get Dankers there to do some plumbing. Right. Because we can't turn the pumps on until the fill season. Yeah. Now, you haven't heard anything from them that they didn't get paid? No. And he was actually, when I talked to him last, was it last week or the week before, he said they were, same thing, waiting for parts. And if the stuff was here, they would have came down and did it. I'm like, yeah. I am, I'm like, I ain't got nothing for you. To, <laughs> I don't have anything yet. Well, we're all set with this meeting now or? Uh, yeah, I think I went through everything. I don't think there's really nothing. I'm sure there's more, but we'll have to have another. The big one was whatchamacallit voting on to get award that bid. Then we'll start the next bidding process. The probably, which is probably, probably the electrical. Well, yeah, I mean, we can I have another meeting if we have to. Right. Well, I'm, I'm thinking we'd get more competitive bids if we separated. What do you call it? The household electric from the water electric. Yeah, from the electronics. Right. You know, I mean, the, the wiring in the generator, the lights bringing the power in the panel. And then, I don't know, maybe we can't do it that way. And then the other part of the electrical bid would be the electronic stuff, wiring that building to this building, the alarms for that building, that kind of stuff. I haven't heard nothing. I'll call Nate again. I haven't heard nothing if he's when they could set the polls. I mean, we really we're in a hold right now, anyways. But I thought they were replacing the poles on a street, but they're just digging around them and putting some uh, preservative or something in them. They they bore a hole in them. Is that what they do? Yeah, they bore a hole in the tree to take a core sample to see how bad the rot is. I and know that they're you, and long plane, Yeah, long plain road. They're digging around every pole just about. Oh, there's there were six guys up here. They made it all the way from the center of town almost down here this morning. Yeah, because they came down those, long plain road. There's nice, a guy standing at each pole. I <laughs> there's they got those nice little yellow plastic tarps or whatever they put on the grass so they don't get the dirt on the grass. <laughs> yeah, I got to get out of here, guys, so. All right. Well, no. I, I mean, motion to adjourn. Okay. All right. Second and third. Three, four. Third. Have a good day, guys. All right. Have a good adjourn.